Well, Francis Ford Coppola had an interesting quote. He said, suspend your self-doubt, do only work you love, and make it personal. Well, that could apply to any business that you're in or any uh, aspect of life, but it especially applies to filmmakers. And we've got a couple of filmmakers here who did just exactly that. Um, they suspended their self-doubt and produced a uh, dramatic film as their first time effort. Uh, they did it about something that they are passionate about, which is uh, an issue, euthanasia. And they uh, made it very personal because they did it as a fictional writing and, and they made it a very personal story, something that people can identify with. That's the power of doing fictional film. Welcome. We've got uh, Karen and Michael Iacobo, is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. And uh, this is your first film. I thought it was very good. We're actually going to preview it uh, right after the interview, and we're going to let you tell us a little bit about the film. But I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, why you chose to do a fictional film your first time out. That's quite a, quite a lot to bite off. The reason, reason we chose to do a film was uh, I started out, I am a writer, and Michael also. And I had written some screenplays, sci-fi, Twilight Zone type stuff. and. And I'm starting out a little bit older. I'm not 20 years old. And instead of uh, sending screenplays out to Hollywood and doing the usual route, I decided I was going to hire a local filmmaker and make one of my shorter screenplays, hire a filmmaker, and um, have a DVD to go with a screenplay so I can show some kind of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. So I ended up talking with filmmakers, and that they encouraged me to make my own. And uh, Michael and I, being a little bit older, were smart enough to bring experts into this, people who had experience. So we hired a film production crew. And uh, that really helped us a lot. And we had an assistant director. We hired a professional photographer. And we uh, ended up making the film. And we decided, hey, wait a minute. We liked this so much that we, we became filmmakers, essentially what happened. OK, that's great. Yeah, when, when you did it, like you said, it's a, a very short film. It's only about 20 minutes long. But I thought the production values were very good. That, that makes sense. I thought you were doing everything from the first time out. But that's, that's super that you were smart enough to do that. You know, when we look at the info war, we, we've got a lot of different aspects. So, you know, what we're doing here, if you take the war analogy, we're, we're looking at uh, the news and, uh, and that's really kind of like an intelligence gathering. That's something that you've got to have. And, and, uh, but when we do a documentary, uh, the way we do it here at InfoWars, we're typically filling in the details that people can't get on a daily basis, kind of pulling the story together, giving the reference to the documents and everything. But what you're doing here is taking it to the next level, and that is really going for people's hearts. Uh, if you're a good storyteller, and that's the talents that you really bring to this, uh, story has a lot of power. It's the way Jesus communicated. It's the way uh, people, time before, and really before the printed uh, word got out, that's the way people had their most effective communication. And, uh, and, and that's what's so powerful about uh, fictional stuff. I really love what you, what you did with this. Thank you so very much. Thanks. You're very, very kind. And, and one of the things we want to show, now this is not an entry, I should say, into Operation Paul Revere, uh, because this is something that was uh, done earlier. Uh, you're working on another project right now that you may have done in time. But uh, this is a good example for people out there who want to get into the film contest. This is a good example of uh, something that hits all the, the points that we're looking for. Um, it even has uh, something that people have been talking about a lot, and that's, uh, you know, we said, uh, had a lot of questions about, we asked people to do liberty placement, you know, have InfoWars in it. You work that in in a very subtle way. Tell us about that. Well, our story has some protesters, uh, protesting groups actually on two sides of an issue. And we had those on the uh, right side of the issue basically carrying a sign that said, Infowars.com, the truth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You also had somebody, I think, wearing a T-shirt, that sort of thing. So it was very yeah. subtle. It wasn't a big commercial. It wasn't in your face, but it was something that was there. And that's essentially what Alex is talking about. Uh, but it was something... And I guess one of the reasons why we're, we, we've got you here and we wanted to show this, it was something that was totally original piece of work, uh, something that was spot on uh, about an issue, a really fresh take on it. And uh, you mentioned uh, Twilight Zone. I mean, it, it does have that little bit of a plot twist to it. It yeah, was great. In fact, it's, it's the uh, length. The length. It's the length of the original um, series, 22 minutes. When you subtract out the commercials, the original Twilight Zone was about 22 minutes. So it's our way of, um, you know, paying respect to the TV series mm -hmm. to make it exactly 22 minutes, mm -hmm. which was not too easy, but we did it. 
Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. There's a lot of things that are important about this, and, and you know, for people who are looking to uh, to help win the info war, people who uh, want to do things to turn hearts and minds, people who want to make money, make a living out of this, and follow their passion. You know, it, it's what you did with a fictional uh, account is is very good, very compelling. But you know, even if people are doing a documentary, they need to think about that as if it's a story. And, you know, one of the best examples of that, I think, are, are films by Errol Morris. Uh, the first one that he did that got people's attention was A Thin Blue Line. And basically, uh, it, was a, it got a guy off a death row uh, here in Texas. Um, mm. And he finished up, got an Academy Award with The Fog of War. That was an interview that he had for a long time with uh, Robert McNamara. But in each of his cases, uh, he's interviewing him. And, uh, and, and this... this uh, the Thin Blue Line essentially was an investigation, and it was an unfolding story. And so although it was a, uh, a documentary, he actually filmed scenes uh, for the movie uh, that were kind of fictional reenactments of different witnesses uh, recalling what they had seen and that sort of thing. So it was very interesting uh, the way that he did it. And in each case, it kind of unfolded as a mystery. This guy had originally, before he had been uh, a filmmaker, he had been a private investigator. So everybody brings their different skills. You know, you were writers before you came into this. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock was an engineer. You know, people don't necessarily start out in film school who do a good job at, at film. This was our film school, that's for sure, making a film. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it took up quite a bit of our lives for about, uh, say, seven or eight months. Um, everything, pre-production, the actual filming, which took four or five days. Then you have post-production, where you have the editing, the music, and on and on. Mm -hmm. So it was very, very time-consuming, but it was worth it. Yeah, that's true. Now, you subcontracted this out to various professionals, and that's a great way to do it. Uh, for people who want to learn one aspect of it, one of the things that has really changed that people need to be aware of, if they're making documentaries or films or even their own music video, is within the last 10 years, the price of production has really come down. It used to be that every piece of equipment was uh, six figures. You know, you want to get in it, into editing or, or colorization, each of those particular pieces of equipment were incredibly expensive, over $100,000. Now, in the last 10 years, it's all come down. The real cost is the cost of learning how to use it, you know, learning how to use that software. And the even greater cost is understanding you know, how, you know, bringing what you're bringing to it, the storytelling capability, you know, investing the time and in seeing how to tell a good story, uh, how to do a good edit, how to compose your shots. Because even within the last five years, the last component that came into this was the camera. And in the last five years with uh, HD DSLRs, it's gotten to the point where if you invest some money in some really good lenses, the camera body doesn't really cost that much. And those lenses are going to carry forward with you. So yeah, I just want to offer a word of encouragement to other people that are out there that, uh, you know, this is a, a very important thing in the info war. It's a very important thing to, to uh, be able to communicate to people in different ways, whether it's a, a documentary, a documentary story, or whether it's a full-out fictional story. And I uh, really encourage people that that's that's what you found. Oh, absolutely. And that makes all the difference. You mm -hmm. have to know what you're doing or bring in people with you that know what they're doing. And you have to be able to work with people of all kinds, uh, everything from volunteer. We had interns from a film school that helped us greatly. We had, we had actors of varying levels of uh, experience. And uh, we worked with, like we mentioned, professional photographer. And everybody has their own way of working because they are all uh, knowing what they're doing. Right. And that and that's the key. Knowing what your strengths are and knowing what you can't do. Hiring out what you can't do. You know, you came in with a really strong writing background. Uh, somebody else might want to collaborate if they've got uh, t other technical capabilities, whether it's editing or filming or something like that. They might get with somebody, uh, collaborate with somebody or hire someone. So that's a key thing. Knowing where you need the help getting professional help in those areas, but you're going to be bringing something to the table in terms of your talent. And that, that's true of any kind of business. In any kind of business, you gotta, you're bringing something in, but you've got to hire somebody to fill in the gaps of your experience. Yes, and what's, what's happened from this is we've developed our own company, and we're planning on making a feature film, and we're planning on going on with this. We, we want to make films like sci-fi movies uh, that have been made in the past that have a very strong underlying message to them of, about human life and human worth. 
and uh, other types of films that we we really are making films for the Infowars type audience mm -hmm. that will understand films on a deeper level. And that's the that's the last thing I want to cover too, and that is the audience. That's what we're trying to do. We we've got a large audience with Infowars. We've got people who care about this issue, and if people haven't noticed by now, Hollywood is not going to make the films that we want to see. They're not going to make that's the right. films about the issues that are important to us and covered in the way that we want to see it. We have to do that ourselves. We have to learn how to do it that ourselves. And there's money to be made there. People can make a living doing this. Infowars is an important marketplace to reach these people. Uh, we've talked about this being an online virtual film festival. You know, if you're a filmmaker, an independent filmmaker, you want to try to get in the uh, uh, movie theaters. The way you're going to do that, you're going to go to the Con Film Festival. You're going to go to Sundance, things like that. But uh, that's not going to really happen to most independent filmmakers. So uh, we've got something that's an online film festival where you're going to get a much, much larger audience than is typically going to be that you're going to reach at a film festival. And it's an audience that's sympathetic to your take on the issue. And, uh, and I think beyond that, uh, Infowars is, is uh, we've already uh, helped people, a lot of people uh, sell and market their own uh, products, their own uh, movies and uh, documentaries and that sort of thing. I see Infowars developing as kind of a marketplace like uh, iTunes is for applications. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great place to reach your target audience. And so we're trying to uh, bring all these different elements. You know, so you've got to have an audience, you've got to have producers. We're trying to kickstart this project. That's the whole point of the Operation Paul Revere contest. Absolutely, and from listening to Infowars Alex Jones show over the years, I find that the audience is the most intelligent people I've ever heard, and the most humane. People are really concerned about their fellow man, they're concerned about their country, they're concerned about the future of this world, and we're seeking out people like this. We want to work with people like this in making films. We're looking for them. That's great. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come right back after the break and uh, let you introduce your film, and we're going to preview your film here on InfoWars. Everybody stay tuned. We'll be right back with that. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Fellow freedom lovers, Alex Jones here with the biggest contest announcement we've ever made. This is so incredibly exciting. We are launching Operation Paul Revere. What did Paul Revere do? He rode through the countryside in New England saying to arms to arms, the Redcoats are coming. One is by land, two is by sea. And all that evil men and tyrants need to flourish is that good men and women do nothing. Let me officially announce Operation Paul Revere, a $100,000 cash first place winner to be judged by yours truly, Alex Jones. The film can be three minutes, it can be up to two hours. It can be fiction, nonfiction, documentary, drama. It's got to promote liberty and freedom and expose tyranny and oppression. And it's not just people in the U.S. that can enter. It's folks worldwide. The rules, the details are at Infowars.com forward slash contest. You have to read the rules and officially sign up for this because it's a $100,000 prize first place, $10,000 second place, $5,000 third place. But just as I did last year with a reporter contest, we are going to crowdsource from the pool of incredible talent out there and hire several official crews to be directors and writers and camera people in Infowars.com produced major films and documentaries that will be put in movie theaters and on cable. And I've got all the connections to get it done. Together, we're going to really give the New World Order hell. This is extremely exciting. I've made over 20 films. One of them alone has reached more than 40 million people on YouTube and Google Video. The Obama Deception, Endgame, Fall of the Republic, Road to Tyranny. Films are the most effective thing I do, but they're very time consuming. And so I want to turn the power of we the people loose here. And your art, your research, your ideas are unstoppable. We're officially kicking the contest off this Friday. And you've got a little more than three months until April 30th. Just a little more than three months to produce your documentary or your film and get it out. And it will absolutely reach tens of millions of people. Our normal contests get about 500 entries. That's what $10,000 prizes. This is 10 times that, 100,000 for first place. That's one of the biggest contests out there. 
In fact, it's the biggest next to Doritos that has $100,000. This is huge, ladies and gentlemen, $115,000 in cash prizes and a shot to have your film produced and financed by InfoWars.com. Edit it, upload it to YouTube and one other alternate public video site and send your entry to Paul Revere at InfoWars.com. The animating contest of liberty that Thomas Jefferson talked about is happening right now. The modern battlefield is in the mind more than ever. We use truth. The globalists use lies and deception. The corruption and oppression and high-tech police state is in our face. But the controllers are scared. They intended to use the internet to dominate and control humanity and surveil us. But we've turned their system against them. This is a historic crossroads that we have reached. And I ask you to ride in the year 2013, just as one of the founders of this republic did back in 1775. I'm calling you to arms in the info war because the pen and the video camera is mightier than the sword. Let's go in there and rescue humanity and awaken them and set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. Be part of this contest. You've got three months. Put your hat in the ring. Be part of the solution to the corruption and oppression. Be part of the resistance to tyranny. We're looking for the Paul Revere's that will drive a stake through the New World Order's wicked heart. Well, welcome back. We've got a couple of filmmakers that uh, we're talking to that just did a short film, and it's called The Unproductive. And we're going to let them introduce the topic to you real briefly, and then we're going to actually preview the film. So stick around. I think you'll really like it. Now, the title, The Unproductive, I think really came from this quote that they had in their press release. It's from um, a uh, bishop uh, at the time of uh, Hitler, and he was writing in Germany as Hitler was coming to power, and he said, if the principle that man is entitled to kill his unproductive fellow man is established and applied, then woe betide all of us when we become aged and infirmed. If it's, illegit if it's legitimate to kill unproductive members of the community, woe betide the disabled. And then he continues to uh, br expand that out to even uh, disabled soldiers who return. And uh, that's essentially the theme of this, uh, this film that they're doing, this short film. Uh, Karen and Michael, could you uh, tell us a little bit about that? What uh, got you interested in uh, the issue of euthanasia briefly? What got me interested in the issue was the 2005 saga of Terry Schindler Schiavo. I was watching that like everybody else, and um, we, it was talked about that the woman was brain dead or, or like she was terminally ill. Yet I saw her on that video where her eyes followed the balloon, and I thought to myself, my goodness, this person looks alert, her eyes are following the balloon. And I started, I was listening to InfoWars, and InfoWars gave an entirely different perspective on the whole thing, that she was not brain dead, mm -hmm. and she was not terminally ill. And so I started thinking about this with a journalistic background like Michael also has. And I said, it's the way the issue is being framed. And I saw people around me, including good Catholics who, you know, do not believe in killing people who are not brain dead, for example. And um, I saw them reacting because they had let go of loved ones, and which is a very sad situation that actually were terminally ill. And their pain was being reawakened by this. And I, I would say to them, well, that's not what's happening. And other people would say, no, no, this lady is actually not brain dead. So I, I got thinking about it, and I, this is where the story evolved from the unproductive. And actually, it wasn't until we were shooting the film that I stumbled upon that quote from Bishop Galen, because I looked up the unproductive one day to see if anybody was using uh, the title, and there came Bishop Galen out of the past. I'd never even heard of the gentleman before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that was just a horrific uh, situation. I. I just could not believe what I was seeing as it unfolded, seeing people uh, get arrested for trying to give her water. I mean, you know, what kind of a country are we creating here? And why wouldn't a governor or a president, you know, Governor Bush or President Bush, I, I totally lost uh, any, any modicum of respect uh, for the Bushes that could have possibly been there when I saw that. I mean, there was plenty to, to be worried about about the Bushes before that. But, I mean, I just could not understand how the Christian community in general, you know, Catholic, evangelical, whatever, I, I just could not understand how they could see someone who would not give a person a cup of cold water as a Christian. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just it just amazed me. But you really hit the nail on the head with this picture, and I really appreciate you doing this. We're very proud to uh, to preview this, and we're going to go to that right now. Thank you so much for your work on this, and we look forward to seeing what you produce next. Our thank pleasure, you, and thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, we're going to have that for you right after... Uh, 
uh, in just a couple of minutes. I uh, just wanted to tell you about Prison Planet TV. Uh, Karen and Michael said that they've been uh, Prison Planet TV subscribers for quite a time. Uh, you can see all of Alex's documentaries there. It's a way to help support our operation. Uh, any operation needs money to run. It helps to pay for our bandwidth. And speaking of bandwidth, you can have up to 10 people at a time can uh, view this. Uh, you can hand that out to other friends and family. Uh, help to wake them up. Well, that's it for tonight's news. We're going to go now to the movie, and we'll be back tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. that he'd never want to be kept alive as a vegetable. He deserves to have his wish respected. The controversy here shows no signs of letting up. The tension here is high as both sides await word of the impending death of the patient. Live from County General Hospital, for TV5, I'm Belinda Marciano. Back to you, Rick. Well, I can tell the weather pretty good. <laughs> How'd you become involved with all this? Someone's got to do something. Just in time. We could really use your help. Vegetable? What a word to describe somebody. You know he isn't brain dead. Wendy, have you even looked at what's really going on here? I have, Alan. And I'm sorry if you just don't get it. Postmodernism, moral relativism, situational ethics by many terms this ancient idea that there is no absolute right or wrong has been resurrected right in our own time. It's quite trendy even scholarly to proclaim that no action is wrong. It's only different. Different culture, different way, different belief. Two cousins on the opposite ends of a controversy, each doing what they believe is the right thing to do. Sometimes life actually pays close attention to our beliefs. Did 
you see the video? He tries to speak. That's not a vegetable. It's a grunt, a physical reaction, a knee jerk. What do you want? It's more than that. Besides his parents, want him to live. That should be enough. The courts ruled against keeping him alive. Are you... Are you smarter than the judges, Alan? I never said that. Or what about the doctors? You know more than them too, right? No. If you just watched the interview with the man's parents and brother and sister, it's obvious they are too attached to him and don't want to face reality. Let him die in dignity. Meanwhile, you have a good heart. You always did. I thought... I thought that you, with all your causes, that you'd want to help me with this. I guess not. Well, I... I gotta get the coffee out there. Everyone's getting cold. But you're not getting the whole story. Doctors who have a different opinion are not being put on TV. TV reporters don't care about him or his family. TV's all theater, Wendy. Theater. Would you want to be kept alive if you were in his position? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to, to be a burden on anyone. Dehydrating and starving a person to death is what the Nazis did. Look at this. Facts, cause not fantasy. See? This is from a conspiracy website. Anyone who isn't brain dead knows that. Conspiracy? Is that your word for the truth? <laughs> you know, truth that you can bear to hear. That man in there has a functioning brain. That's another extreme opinion. Do you actually think that I wouldn't know if he wasn't a vegetable? My mother was like that man is now. I remember what happened to Auntie. She was terminal. I had to take my mother off the machine. Wendy. Wendy, I'm so sorry. What happened to your mom? It's not the same as this. You don't know what that was like. You never had to go through what I went through. You went through a lot. But what's happening to the men in there has nothing to do with your mother. The church has even come out in support of him so he can live. Doesn't that mean anything? I am a good Catholic and you know it. And when, by the way, was the last time that you were in a church? This isn't about me. He is aware of what's going on. He has a brain injury. That's all. He's disabled. He's not brain dead. He could have therapy. He could regain full brain function. That's a possibility, you if know. If that was true... We're not children anymore. Believe in everything we're told. The control corporate media has, has an agenda. 
so clear. They never discussed the rights of the disabled. Having that does not make you an expert on the disabled. So why don't you just keep your paranoid delusions to yourself, okay? I have work to do here. In other news, the leader of the Let Him Die protest remains hospitalized several weeks after she was struck by a speeding vehicle. How well are you holding up, Alan? You do know why I'm here, don't you? Yes. Wendy has you listed as her closest remaining relative. No, I can't. She's coming back. Her mind is just resting right now. I I'm sure. The accident damaged her brain. She's been designated persistent vegetative. She's not coming back. This is the document she signed attesting to her desire not to be kept alive under artificial conditions. Alan, I'll need your signature too. What if I don't want to sign it? Take a moment. Think about what Wendy would want you to do. I don't need a moment. I told you people, but nobody seems to listen to me. Are you 100% sure that she isn't coming back? There are errors in these cases. Aren't there? No, not that I know of. Have you seen the counselors here on staff? I don't need your counselors. Her heart. Her heart's still beating. She's still a human being. She has a soul. My cousin's brain is not her soul. The only reason she is alive is because of this technology. Her brain is just injured. And, and this is why she can't live on her own. I mean, there, what if you did something different? Alan, There's got to be other options here. Alan, she's dead. She's brain dead. Her brain is gone. You're doing the right thing. It's what she wanted. Terminating a life can be, well, can be a blessing. And besides, you, you'll be giving this bed to someone who can live a productive life.
shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he'll rescue you from the snare of the fowler, from the destroyer's pestilence. I don't know if you can hear me. But I'm so sorry. I guess, I guess I was wrong. People shouldn't be kept alive this way. You remember when... You remember when we used to go camping? And at the end of the night, you know, we... We used to sit around at the at the campfire and, and and we used to sing. You know, I haven't told you in a long time, but but I love you. And I hope you know. I hope you know that I did this for you. I didn't expect to see you here today. How are you, Bernadette? Glad the media circus is over? <sighs> Prescribing myself a stiff drink and two weeks in the Caribbean. And kudos to you, Doctor. We've exceeded quota this quarter. The unproductive do have their use. As humanity moves full speed ahead towards Big Brother's brave new world, the 1776 revolutionary idea of unalienable rights has been blown off course. We are returning to the distant shores of ancient Rome and Babylon, where the difference between right and wrong is murky. Life is cheap, and organs can be so expensive. Life just like you You'll 
Life just like you.